I'm John Ellis, and I want to talk to you today about Pastor Darren's coronavirus diet. I have really been amazed how many Christian families are struggling with being quarantined. Dr. Phil said on the news last night on Fox News that there will be a tipping point in the lockdown where more people die from the effects of the quarantined family than die from the coronavirus. I've been home with my wife for five weeks, and we've not had any disagreements. We've actually grown closer together. That's a miracle. <laughs> Pastor Darren's uh, coronavirus diet that feeds the body, the soul, and the spirit has really helped us. I've done the grocery shopping for years and have been the consummate bargain hunter. I mean, my wife took over the grocery shopping because I'm over the age of 70 and she didn't want me going to the grocery store. So I reluctantly, very reluctantly agreed. But uh, the first time she came home with five bags of groceries, she came home in fear, fear that I would look at each item, check the price and see if she got a good deal. <laughs> and I was driven by the spirit of pride to do just that. And it was a horrible mistake. <laughs> Fortunately, I was convicted by the Holy Spirit, confessed my sin, begged for forgiveness, and was forgiven. I repented, and I have never done it again. <laughs> and my next challenge was the refrigerator. You know, at night when I was watching the coronavirus news, the pantry and the refrigerator would cry out to me to come and get a snack. They keep singing this alluring song, and I joined the choir. You know, I thought that if I went back 10 times and just took a little snack, I'd be okay. And it wasn't my conscience that convicted me. It was the bathroom scale that screamed out that I had fallen to one of the seven deadly sins, gluttony. <laughs> and my first response was to reflect on my behavior. You know, I said, well, yes, my behavior isn't that good, but we're living in uncharted waters, and I should cut back, but I'm quarantined. And reflection opened the doorway to denial. Well, it isn't that bad, but I was up against an unbiased bathroom scale, so denial was useless. I had no choice but to repent. You know, John the Baptist, he, he preached the Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. He got his head cut off. But Jesus follows up with repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And he got put on a cross. It's not easy to preach repentance. And Christians during the pandemic will talk about repentance, but very few will embrace it. Repentance benefits you. God's fine. Most Christians will go through the coronavirus pandemic, reflecting rather than repenting, but a small remnant will choose repentance, and the ones who only reflect will end up farther away from God. The ones who repent will be radically transformed and changed for life. And repentance means a change of mind, followed by a change of heart, followed by a change to a good-for-you behavior. You may ask yourself the question, how many new godly behaviors have I cultivated during the quarantine? The Bible says about your body, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. That's in 1 Corinthians 6. <laughs> well, this is a great time. To take a look in the mirror, to get on the bathroom scales and assess the condition of the Holy Spirit's temple. You know, some of you may be pleasantly surprised. Some of you, like me, might be in need of a tune-up. <clears throat> you know, so many people have gone and returned to their roots, eating Kraft Dinner and Chef Boyardee and Zoodles and all kinds of pasta at their peril. You know, the way to reduce lineups at the grocery stores is for all of us to lose a few pounds, not gain a few. The human soul has three parts, thoughts, will, and feelings. 
And negative thoughts will capture your will and lead you to anger, fear, and sadness. And most of the thoughts that you get in the quarantine family when you're sitting alone or even sometimes when you're walking around will be negative. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So when you get a negative thought, take it captive. Replace it with God's truth. Praise the Lord with a heart of gratitude that you don't have the virus, that you have food to eat, or someone drops off some groceries at your door when you don't have food to eat, but you have love to share. The Bible says in Philippians 3, but one thing I do know, forgetting what was behind, straining to what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize, which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. God has predestined works for you to do during these hard times. The church should be coming alive. Fear of getting the coronavirus and dying from it, are giving way to anger and sadness. Anger towards the government. They didn't do enough testing so we can get back to work. You know, in Michigan, the streets were full of protesters demanding their jobs back. Did you know that one third of the Americans did not pay their rent this week? And as the quarantine family spends more time in quarantine, you're going to see them biting each other more than ever. You know, schools have sent home some lessons for parents, but some parents are finding it hard to teach their children. Some aren't qualified. Some of the children are just like their parents, stubborn and rebellious. <laughs> One teacher told me that half of her kids are doing the online work, and it's the half that don't need it. You know, if the restart of the economy takes longer than expected, you're going to see hope fade. And the devil wants you to become downcast, opening the door for anger and depression. Remember Cain, why are you so angry and downcast? And hopeless and helpless thoughts are going to flood you. You may even resort to crying all the time. You may even get thoughts of suicide. But we are called to resist them with scripture. Psalm 24 said, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And Jesus wants to help you through this crisis, but you have to let him. He'll never take over your free will. He can bring up great memories of past victories. You know, I lost so much at one point in my life. I, I fell to divorce. I, I was nearly bankrupt. I lost my children. And you know what? God has restored all the years the locusts ate and more. The Bible says, don't get too hung up on the love of money. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And some of you are feeling really left and forsaken. But God's there for you. I want to talk about your spirit now. Your spirit has three parts, conscience, intuition, and communion center. So my wife and I listen to Pastor Darren's advice to have communion every night. But before we take communion, we sit quietly and confess our sins. Any thoughts we've had of anger, fear, or sadness, or anything else we've done wrong, you're not perfect. That's really hard. <clears throat> and the next day, you start to think about your sins. <clears throat> Excuse me. Think about your sins because you don't want to confess them again. It's bad. <laughs> but the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Confession is good for the soul. And it brings us closer to God so that he can purify us from 
all wrong for you behaviors. He wants to bless us. And our intuition, which is part of our spirit, it alerts us to danger, but it also alerts us to God's will. So our intuition tells us who needs help and encouragement. I've been making a lot of phone calls lately, and God puts them on my heart when I go for a prayer walk in the morning. And all I have to do is obey. We had to drive for an hour the other day to drop some groceries off at Beth's parents' house. They were elated to see our faces and to see that we would drive that distance just for them. And we have more contact with our grandchildren since they're home alone than we ever had through the internet. You know, our com communion center is our spiritual lifeline to God. And as the word is read daily under the illumination of the Holy Spirit, as I go on prayer walks, and I go for about a 40 minute in the morning and then in the afternoon with my wife for another 40 minutes, it is amazing the peace that God brings into our hearts. It's beautiful, but you have to do it. And I never teach what I haven't lived. And I want to tell you that Pastor Darren's diet works. So don't reflect on the new diet. Repent. Try it. It will work for you also. So if you've been reflecting, join me on this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I confess that I've let anger, fear, and sadness separate me from your love. And I declare that I want to come back home. Please forgive me and give me the grace to follow Pastor Diet's coronavirus diet. God bless you.